not harp too much on the Aqua Tower, but I do want to start there because it's 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 really stunning. And I know you've probably told the story a thousand times, but this was your first skyscraper. How do you just get that gig? <laughs> I think there's a lot of luck to that, and especially for a young architect, because usually people that do tall buildings want very established um, corporate firms to do that kind of work. And so um, I just I met the developer at a, at a dinner, like an alumni dinner, and we were sitting there. Um, you know, those are so usually so boring. And um, we were sitting around talking, and we were listening to actually Frank Gehry, who yeah. was presenting. And um, I never thought that I was interviewing for a job like that. <laughs> I was just, you know, passing the evening away. And um, about four months later, he called me up and said, you know, do you want to do a building with us? This was the developer. The developer. Yeah. And I, I went over to his office and brought all my stuff and was ready to interview and, and you know, portfolio and all. And I didn't realize this, but developers like to uh, make decisions very quickly. And so he just said, um, I've already seen your work. Let's just, let's get started. <laughs> and, uh, wow. um, so that was, I mean, there's some, like I said, there's probably some luck to it. Well, I, I mean, how do you, you know, you end up getting sitting next to someone eating rubber chicken? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is the, and, and it seems like any, any, another type of building could be just as complex. Is the skyscraper considered the kind of height of what an architect can do? Is it the, is it, this is what every architect strives for? I mean, you've done other buildings that I assume yeah. You have just as much passion for yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, and that's the weird thing with as architects, we don't, at least we studio gang, we don't think about like one type of building being more complex to another. Each one is its own thing, and so I think it's a big myth that it's hard to design a skyscraper, and so and hopefully we we proved that we could do it. You know, we we is did. Is there more it. money in it though? <laughs> um, not when you make every floor plate different. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into that. Let's get into what makes Aqua Tower unique. And it's, uh, and I'm going to get the word wrong, but it's, it's a standard rectilinear, is that the way you say it? Yeah. Building. But what do you do, what I, you, can, you can describe it better than I oh. can, that kind of makes it different? Well, it, the first thing was we didn't think of making, we didn't start out thinking about we're going to make this icon, we're going to plaster it down in the city of Chicago, and we're going to be famous. You know, we, we didn't think about it like that. We were thinking, wow, this site is really hidden, and no one's ever going to see this building. And, you know, what's it going to be like to walk up to it on the street? What's it going to be like to be from inside out? What are you going to see? So we actually designed all these curves and, you know, topography on the building to allow people to see more views around. So we, it's kind of like designing it from the inside out or walking down the street and thinking about the pedestrian instead of thinking about the money shot, you know. And, um, and then in doing that, we, we also discovered that with the topographic, I call it a topographic tower, um, there's a lot of other benefits too, like breaking up the wind, making it possible to go out on the balcony and, and be in the outside. I mean, how many buildings downtown are just these sealed boxes sure. that you can't get out? So. And because of the yeah. way the building is designed, and it's really the balconies you're talking yeah. about, you can have balconies higher than other skyscrapers. I didn't quite understand why, oh. but I know that that's well, true. Well, uh, anyone could have done it before, but just no one ever thought of making it possible for someone to go outside on the 82nd floor. Because it would be too windy? Um, that maybe, or just that, I don't know. I don't know who was designing these things before yeah. us. <laughs> um, but one thing that I really like, and, and it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feeling, and I think those of us who live in the city, especially like Chicago, you know how there's uh, urban adventurers and people that, that um, climb bridges and stuff at night? I mean, it's almost like the high rises are, are our, our mountain range, you mm -hmm. know? So we actually, when you step out on a balcony or 82 floors up, it is thrilling. There's a thrill to it. And I like that kind of safe danger. Do you live, you don't live in the Aqua Tower, do you? Or is that considered no. like gauche? <laughs> <laughs> I read this story once about how um, Frank, 
Frank Lloyd Wright would get phone calls from people that were in his buildings that said, you know, the roof is leaking. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a real sweet man, so he went over and fixed it right away. Right? <laughs> I was just imagining coming down in the elevator and, you know, if I lived there. That's right. And you would hear a lot of stories. But, no, so I actually what the real story is that um, my partner and I, Mark, we, we had just bought a place, our first apartment. Before that, we lived over in Logan Square. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we were just in the middle of fixing it up when we started designing Aqua. So, so, but it wasn't called Aqua then; it was called Building P. So, <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> so, if we can, let's go back to the beginning, and and I'm talking about the beginning of your life. Uh, <laughs> when did you know that? designing buildings, designing art, that being an architect was something that you wanted to do and that it was something that you could do, that it was something mm. that there was a career out there. Mm. Well, the first thing I wanted to be was um, a veterinarian. Okay. And, and um, I had brought, we had a day where you could bring your, you know, it was like a show and tell okay. at school, St. James. And um, I brought in, you know, kittens and said I wanted to be a veterinarian, but did, they said, no, no, don't, don't pick that, you know, really kind of discouraged it. Why? So I went out crying. I don't know. Just like, girls don't do that. You brought your kittens in, <laughs> and then and they crushed your dreams <laughs> with your kittens right there. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. But then, um, you know, I went home. My parents said, you can do whatever you want. Don't listen to it. You know? Yeah. But what I really like to do is make stuff. And so I always was one of those kids that was, you know, building clubhouses and tree houses and uh, forts. I even devised actually a bar out of a wagon wow. yeah and then you could have someone come up and sit at the on the wheels like a bar that you would like a pretend bar like you'd you know. order alcohol from yeah but it was oh. just you know yeah coke yeah okay. Color. Yeah. <laughs> from kittens to alcohol <laughs> that's why i like this this place it's amazing the acoustics in a balloon frame building here that's like do you know so it's cool. a frank lloyd wright building <laughs> I don't think so, but it, Pre yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so continue on. You first you decided you want to be a vet, <laughs> then you decided you want to be an alcoholic, and then <laughs> right. Well, and then yeah. how did you get the architect? Um, well, just you know, like oh well, my dad was a an engineer, and he we would go take car rides to go see bridges. Really? Yeah. So we would drive. We like, would go and look at. Christmas lights. <laughs> the only Jewish family in America. Like, look, son, that's the holiday you can't celebrate. Anyway, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Well, you would think you would have become a lighting designer then. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. <laughs> um, no, so then, you know, like that, and also he would always bring home paper, like these big tablets of paper, and he had, a, let me use his electric eraser. <laughs> <laughs> but just like all the other people that you spoke to tonight, it's really true with architecture. You get into these, you know, we're in that messy phase right now of creating something and it really sucks right now. <laughs> so we're, we're like in that phase where it's, that's the most fun time when it's so undefined. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's what I'm doing now. But back then, yeah. I was just using an electric eraser. 